So welcome everybody. Good morning, afternoon. I don't know whatever. If you're like a 5 a.m. wake up or if you're like me and it's like 8.01 leaving for like 8.03. Um, still morning. So this is Operation Behavior Providing Triage Throughout Advanced Tiers. There is a QR code that will take you, um, hopefully, to a Padlet, as well as the Bitly code there too if you're working off of the device. We will be hopping into this Padlet as we progress through the presentation today. Um, and I'm hoping that it'll be a little bit more hands-on and activity towards the latter part of the presentation today that we'll all be in the Padlet together and kind of adding to it as we go forward. But that's a little activity to come. Um, but first, kind of just a little disclaimer in a way. So this is an advanced tiers presentation. So I just want to make sure that everyone gets the most out of their time here at Hershey. I know like coming here so many years, me and my teams were always like trying to get the most information. So if you are just starting off your PBIS adventure or journeys, or you're really still like trying to implement tier one in your schools or <coughs> districts, this might not be the best presentation for you yet. Um, I'm really going to be diving into those top tiers of that PBIS triangle and really focusing more on the individual student rather than the universal love. Um, so I, I won't be offended as much. Maybe you, if you're leaving now, I might say something to you, but I probably won't be offended after half an hour tonight. So we're good. So really, again, this session is honing in on the top of that MTSS triangle for those individual students needing those additional supports. So really the goal of this presentation in the session is for us to have a very brief overview of those advanced tiers, um, diving into organizing data and the systems of supports that those kiddos or students would need, and then utilizing an organizer to help your team facilitate an action plan for that individual student. And then really identify some preventive strategies or interventions some instructive and some responsive strategies and interventions as well to include in that specific action plan for the student. Um, PBS World, um, Tina started off this morning as well, um, learning expectations, just like we do in our schools and our classrooms for our students. Um, here's some learning expectations for us in this session. I'm really hoping that we remain and consider being responsible, being present, and being engaged. So, just like Kirsten said before, you know, phones on vibrates. I understand we're all adults. Again, please, if you need to get up, make a phone call if you're waiting, um, just step out, come back in. Again, I will probably say something to you as you're leaving. Um, or I'll even answer the phone for you. Um, being present, so just being an active participant, laughing at my stupid dad jokes. Um, I am, I think I'm hilarious, but um, they think I'm hilarious. At least they're sitting in the front. Um, hopefully some chuckles in the back as well. Network. Networking is so important at these events, and that's how I really gained the most out of my experiences coming to Implementers Forum so many years now. And just being engaged, so contribute by sharing relevant information, ideas, ask questions, and most importantly, find components that will fit your schools and your systems. So today, the plan is, you know, you might be looking at this, well, you know, that, that's not, not going to work for me. This is a template for you to go back to your teams and kind of fill in the gaps, make it more individualized for you and your systems that you're presenting. Um, I am infamous for really disliking icebreakers. I don't know if anybody else is an icebreaker fan. I am sorry, I am not. However, I do like to check in with my audience all the time. Um, who here is a Schitt's Creek fan? Oh, I'm so glad. And for the digital world, Schitt's Creek, I promise, is a TV show. Don't censor me. Don't make me say beep. It's like, <laughs> who likes a big creek? Okay? I promise it is a TV show. It's not vulgar. Oh. Um, so, on a scale of one to nine, we're going to use our fingers. Um, on a scale of Moira, how are you feeling today? So, just take a moment. We just had a great keynote speaker, um, Dr. McDaniel. Um, it's day one of the Implementers Forum, which is so exciting. 
So, um, what are we thinking? How are we feeling? You can hold up your fingers, make faces at them. You can try to make them more your face. Let's see, I'm seeing some sevens, I'm seeing some nines, some two, ones. Okay. 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 As long as I'm seeing some ones. And it's <laughs> great. So, a little bit about me. Um, I am the dad of two fur babies. And um, so up on the top right is Copernicus. He just turned two in the beginning of October. He is a lab and pit bull mix. And on the left here at the bottom, he's my baby. His name's Horton. And he is a chocolate lab. And he actually just turned nine yesterday. So it was really hard. I came, I traveled in yesterday, um, leaving him for his birthday. Um, you will see, I always, put these in my presentations as well, my babies. Um, you'll see a little bit more about them as well later too. But I have 17 years in education, and it runs the gamut of both the special ed world as well as gen ed. Um, the majority of my time has been spent in the emotional support setting as a classroom teacher, and um, some administrative work spread in throughout as well. Um, currently, I just started at the NEIU 19 as a training and consultation member for TAC. I'm sure that you might have heard from your own IUs of what we do. So I'm very, very excited to join them. And I support the LEEI initiative, which is behavior, um, as well as MTSS academics, and dip my toes in inclusive practices lately as well. Um, in my prior school district, and I do have to give a shout out to Bellevue Elementary, um, because they really helped hone this um, graphic organizer that we'll be diving into today of uh, applying that into our tier three programs. And I sat as an active team member on all three tiers, a tier one, two, and three, being the team lead for tiers two and three. And last year I was the district coach as well. So why triage? Um, that's an interesting word. I, First, I thought I was going to you know, wear a full white coat for a doctor, but I was like, oh, white coat syndrome, I don't want to freak anybody out on day one. So I figured, okay, I'll just throw some doctors up there. Um, triage. So pulled directly from Merriam-Webster's definition, but I'm really focusing on this second piece here. So assigning priority order to objects, to projects on the basis of where funds and other resources can be best used most needed and are most likely to achieve success. So I really want us to keep that in mind as we move forward, especially those three key points, how they're best used, most needed, and likely to achieve success. Okay. It would be kind of taboo at this point in the PBS MTSS conference to not have a multi-tier triangle of some kind. Um, who here has never seen a multi-tier triangle before? Raise your hand because we're all going to put in laughing. You know I brought that. <laughs> Move on. Um, but yes, so the difference here, and I really like this, that it's layered. We really want to talk about this layered supports. So again, we're looking at that tier one level, and if, hopefully we're looking at the entire systems. So again, that 80% mark approximately. But again, if data is showing, that the student is not responding to tier one, then we can layer in tier two supports. So we're looking at some more small groups, we're looking at some more group work. That doesn't mean that, you know, tier one's gone out of the way. It's still in there, we're just layering on top of it. And again, once again, if data is showing, and then we move to tier three, we have tertiary prevention, and that is, drum roll, where we are going today. And that's me. <laughs> so remember that word triage that I was saying before? It's the priority of resources that are most needed, best used, and most likely to achieve success. So as we move up that triangle, the focus is becoming more individualized. This small but mighty group of students um, is really requiring those intensive supports. So they're at the top of the triangle and they need those additional resources and supports to really succeed. So I love that term labor because as we know, those are requiring those additional supports. I don't want to forget those universal systems as well. There we go. 
Um, as we increase the intensity of these supports, we really also want to intensify the frequency of our data collection as well. Data analysis, as well as our decision-making cycles. So we know that students that require tier three interventions and supports are sometimes a little bit tough, either behaviorally and or academically. Uh, they may take up the majority of our time in our classrooms, in our schools, our resources and our energy. So I always often hear like this problem admiration. I like to say, you know, you're in sitting in meetings and everyone's sitting there admiring the problem, but we never come up with a solution. We talk about it. We talk about how tough this kiddo is. We talk about, oh, they trashed my classroom. And it's like, oh, sorry, you know, yeah. Maybe tomorrow will be better. <laughs> OK, thanks. Um, so again, the goal of today is to provide you with the framework and a template to really utilize during your tier three team meetings to come up to identify these solutions and really these actions for your team to implement. So here may be a little different uh, view from our multi-tier triangle that we don't often really see. So remember, we are talking about individual students. And here at the top of the triangle, however, each individual student or each individual person has their own triangle themselves. And there's different behavioral, academic, social, emotional aspects that are strengths and areas to improve on. So little soapbox moment, we really, we don't want to label students. You know, students are not oh, a tier one kiddo, or they're not a tier two or on, are on a tier. So I try really hard to avoid language like that, where it's not, well, okay, yeah, this is just a tier two kid. Um, so a better statement example is really like, okay, well, they're needing tier two supports, or this student is receiving tier two supports for problem solving. Um, another common misconception really is that tier three means special education. It doesn't. Um, you could, a student or an individual can need tier three supports, but not be referred to special education and vice versa. Um, a student might have an IEP, but not really require those tier three supports at the top of the triangle. So I just really want to, I always like to throw that out there as well when, I'm, when I'm discussing tier threes. So tiers really help us structure the supports that students really need to become su successful for aspects of their life. So I really compare this to academics as well. So students also have an academic profile. Um, they might be, you know, responding to tier one supports uh, for the area of math, but kind of a little bit struggling a little bit more in the L ELA um, realm. So they might need additional tutoring as they move up the triangle of supports for academics as well um, for reading comprehension, say. So here is a very quick glance of today's main focus, a brief tier three plan. So the core concepts of function, prevention, teaching, reinforcement should all remain the same across all tier, all tier three components of our support planning. Um, however, the function-based supports, and that's gonna be a key word, I, Dr. McDaniels is like, you know, it's not the F word, but I'm gonna say the F word a lot if you think that right. Fidelity. Um, but again, it's not an F word. Um, any school psychs in the house? Any school psychs? Oh, okay, great. Um, you're either gonna love this or you're gonna hate this. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm really hoping, so again, our school psych really enjoyed this because, again, this is not to be confused with a brief FBA. Um, this doesn't take place of it. It doesn't, you know, this might be a component of it. So this, we are collecting baseline data. So you are collecting baseline. It's not going to mess up if the student then requires an FBA. So sometimes the school site's like, oh wait, you're trying interventions before we can collect data. Well, wait, wait, wait. No, we're doing all that. So it's just a kind of like a little prior preventive approach as well. Um, so hopefully, we are gathering and analyzing the initial data to create a general hypothesis statement. And you're gonna see that in our template as well. It's kind of, I like to say, it's a big game of Mad Libs, if you ever played those as an adult 
or child. Um, and you'll see what I mean when we get to that slide too. So we are identifying function-based interventions and supports that will guide the student, hopefully, that toward, back down that triangle towards the initial first and second tiers as well. Um, our brief um, tier three plan is rooted and guided by the tiered fidelity inventory, or most famously heard of as the TFI. Um, part of becoming recognized by the state and our PAPBS network is through a process to examine fidelity and sustainability of your programming. So typically many facilitators like myself will be doing, um, you might have had individuals come to you and look at your programming as well and possibly complete the TFI. Um, so this is a process together that one thing to note is that this whole guideline is paired really well with the 2019 version of the TFI 2.1. Is there anybody that is jumped on to the bandwagon of TFI 3.0 yet that are trying it out in their schools? I know Forest City is because they're in my region. That's why I was. <laughs> anybody else? So right now, this guideline does not perfectly mesh with the TFI 3.0. There's gonna be some little adaptations to make, but again, it's just adding in a couple different components and looking at things a slightly different way. So we can still utilize this form to help address and help support our students and our tier three plans. Um, but part of the TFI in tier three is we look at individual student plans. And we look at all these different components and is there, does the plan address these different areas of concern? And that is something that this guideline and this plan will do. So as we progress in this presentation, you will might see the, I'm not even gonna try to use the laser pointer thing on this, but there's little puzzle pieces. So anytime that you see a puzzle piece throughout the rest of the presentation, that means it ties directly to one of these TFI's um, areas, domains, if you would, okay? So just a little like treasure hunt as we move forward of a little I spy. So let's jump right into the plan as well. Um, earlier on, I did say it was on the QR code. There's a bit.ly. It'll be up here in the moments as well, moving forward. Um, the plan is on the Padlet. It was also in, if you're at um, the Patent Events page, it's also all, all the documents on the Padlet are also uploaded to there as well too. Um, you don't have to follow along, um, but just know it's there. So really, we always want to start off with you know, the typical demographics, but I said, remember that layered approach. Um, we really want to start talking and thinking about tier one interventions. Um, and how did that student respond to tier one? So it's a dialogue for the whole team to have. Okay, you know, what went well? What didn't go well at a tier one level? What was the student responding to? Um, moving on, then when we get to after tier one, since it is a layered approach again, we jump to tier two. What tier two interventions have been attempted in the past and what are the main reasons for a lack of success? You know, how do we get to this point? What was already implemented? implemented what was tried? And I said, this is very like, I guess, edible, editable? You can edit easily, there we go. That's a better way. Um, so you'll see at the very top here, the tier two interventions have been attempted in the past. This was my prior school district. This was my team that I worked with. Those were the specific tier two interventions that we had of you know, check and check out, small group counseling, bus, we had a bus uh, camp for bus behavior, um, attendance, truancy issues. So those and academic interventions and supports as well. So that's something for you to create and plug in, okay, what tier two intervention supports we have, we're just gonna list them. And it's a simple process, okay, quick, easy, what's already been tried in the past? Okay, let's circle it, okay, highlight it. What went well, and then kind of underneath it, okay, thinking of check-in, check-out, what didn't work for that student? Why was there a lack of success? And you'll see later on, we can build on that. 
Once we have the initial information in place, you know, I figured we're in Hershey, so I got to put some Hershey people in here too. Um, we want to really start looking at the data. We want to start understanding this individual's behavior and really begin to the hypothesis statement. Okay. So, what behavior or behaviors are creating a problem for the student and the environment? So we really want to think, and it is okay. We know that we don't have a cookie cutter student sitting in front of us that only picks up chairs and throws them at me. We know not only that, it's breaking things. They're probably cursing at you while they're throwing the chair. Um, or is it more internalizing behaviors where they're just withdrawn? Are they crying easily? Um, are they stealing, eloping is another big issue. So again, just looking at it as a whole, what are all the behaviors that the student is um, demonstrating? And it's just a list of quick circles and go. Once we have all of our behaviors listed, we really want to pick one behavior to focus on in this plan. And why? So when I say one behavior, Really, again, we are picking and choosing interventions and strategies based on function. And when you start put throwing in a whole bunch of different behaviors, that could really muddy the water. One intervention or strategy could really, you know, use to help those elopers, but it might not be the best strategy if they're, doing, if they're refusing to do work. Um, so you really want to pick one behavior to focus on as a team decision. And this is really when you're pulling in your classroom teachers and the teachers that have daily interactions with these students. Um, again, I always like to think in a safety manner. So if there's a safety concern, which we'll get to as well as part of this plan, um, that might be a behavior that I pick. It might be low frequency, meaning it doesn't happen very often, but it's high intensity. So it's something that I really want to address. Even though it's not happening every single day or every hour, um, there's definitely, it's a behavioral that safety of themselves or others. So that, that might be the focus of my, my plan. Okay. So here is where this baseline data comes in that I was talking about earlier with our school site population. Um, looking just at the behavior that you selected. So we're only, we're focused in right now on that one moment of, okay, thinking of that behavior, that's what I'm gonna track the data on. Are we looking at, on an average day, how often it happens? Um, how much time is spent dealing with it as well? And kind of how we data collected, how did we observe? What did we use? Did we use a certain tool? Did we, this is just, you know, hey, Putting it on there so anybody that comes in, looks at the plan, knows exactly, oh, okay, I need to, if I'm doing some progress monitoring on, on this kiddo, I'm looking at frequency because, you know, we used a frequency count before. Or if we're looking at purely just ODRs, I would use a little bit more than that. Um, but again, so looking at different um, just strategies and things to data collect as well. So let's take a look. As we progress forward, we have this baseline data. We have the information, we have the numbers, okay? Now I'm kind of looking at the environment as a whole. So I'm bringing Horton back into play. Um, only because, again, I, just because Copernicus is not up here does not mean he's, Horton's my favorite, but it was his birthday, so the birthday boy's up. Um, Horton's a little mischievous, and he's displaying some behaviors. And when is this behavior more likely to occur for Horton at the following times? Well, definitely during lunch, okay? Food's coming out, he knows, okay, behaviors are starting. You know, it's maybe a little bit more unstructured. And um, what seems to be triggering this behavior? Alone, no attention. I can tell you right now, I think I know this student very, very well. I feel, I'm thinking it's an attention-seeking behavior but I'm looking at the data. I'm going with my gut and I'm looking at all the different components. So again, forms super easy, super user-friendly, circle and go, circle and go. And 
what usually happens after the behavior occurs. So again, this is through observations, through data collection. Well, I know I end up giving in. And what else do I do with Horton? Yeah, he receives extra attention because he's asking for it. So I'm really feeding into that behavior. Can you tell I'm a behavioralist? My spouse loves it when I you know, start data collection on the dogs <laughs> um, and on them as well. So I'm sure, I don't know if anybody else does that with their families, but I do. Um, part of this plan also looks at motivation. Um, there's motivation assessment scales that are included in the Padlet and the handouts as well. Um, do you have to use these specific ones? No, but they're there for you if you'd like. Um, a motivational assessment scale, so the adult fills out the form with the specific target student in mind. Um, it's using a Likert scale, and they're looking and asking questions like, does the behavior occur when you take a favorite toy or a favorite food away, or an activity? So that would be, and then you would rate the student on the scale. Or does the behavior occur following a request to perform a difficult task? Again, circle and go. Once you fill out the motivational assessment scale and you score it, it comes up in these four different domains. Escape, attention, tangible, or sensory. Does that start ringing a bell a little bit to some people? Yeah. Um, I also included there is the motivational assessment scale two as well, I tossed that in the Padlet. I have not personally used it yet, um, but it is a little bit longer form. However, it breaks up the escape function into two separate domains. So it's really looking at escaping task or are they escaping attention? So I also threw that in there for you as well. Um, another piece that I love adding to my individual plans is a forced choice survey. These were fantastic, especially for my emotional support teachers that I worked with, um, and I love sharing the forced choice with them because it's really they are sitting down with the individual student and the student is answering the questions for you. So it's kind of like a game of would you rather. And right now, I'm going to make you a forced choice right now. And it's not, would you rather stay and listen to me or would you rather go early for lunch? That's not the choice. But the choice is, would you rather tie wet shoelaces or wipe runny noses? I can always tell my secondary people because they're like, yeah, no, we're not doing either of that. We don't do that, okay? So when I say go, um, you're gonna hold up a one if you would rather tie wet shoelaces, you don't know why they're wet. Um, <laughs> or would you rather hold up the two fingers if you would rather wipe runny noses? Okay, go. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of twos on this side, up front. Oh, I see a lot of ones too. It's a hard choice. It's a hard choice, especially if you know they came from the bathroom right away and then you're like, mm, no. But if it's a rainy day, maybe I'll go with number one. No, I think I'm sticking with one. Um, again, so the student is choosing. Now again, they're not choosing like this, but it's would you rather receive a candy bar or friends ask you to sit with them? Um, that would be an example of a question that they would have to pick. Um, another way is, you know, would you rather me write excellent on your paper or would you rather us hanging up on the bulletin board? So those are the questions that the student is answering and picking. So there's 40 questions. It might seem like a lot, but again, it's only a couple minutes and you don't have, the teacher doesn't have to sit and do this whole entire thing all at once. Um, it really also helps build relationships as well because they're getting that one-on-one -on -one individual attention and supports but they're also you know, kind of playing a game. And some things really might surprise them. I hear that a lot, and when I've done this too, I was like, wow, here I thought you really liked getting this adult approval, but you're actually really focusing on the consumables, and that's what's motivating for you. So when we score the reinforcement survey, it comes up in these five different domains. 
looking at adult or peer approvals, um, competitive approvals, independent rewards. So it really ranks them of what these students want to kind of work for and what's motivating and for them. Now, I'm, I was a little upset on this next slide because I thought I was the only person at the implementers forum that is going to use an image from Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> and then Dr. McDaniel totally stole my thunder at the keynote and I was like, yeah. I almost said something. I, yeah, I love that curse I'm using. <laughs> if you do, because I have to say it now. She goes, ah, oh, fidelity. <laughs> What's the function? Am I? I know, now I feel like I'm dating myself. Um, so conjunction, junction, what's the function? What's the function of the behavior? So we're looking at these trains down here at the bottom, escape, access, sensory, attention. We really want to focus in on the function of the behavior. So all those different components of data collection, all those surveys and things that we talked about, it's all coming together now in this one smooth lane um, train rail of how do we decide what is the function of the behavior? Well, it's easy. Data. 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 And I'm not talking about the character from Goonies. Um, I love that movie so much. Um, so again, we're looking at the data that we're collecting. And what do we think the student is saying through this behavior? Okay picking the function of the behavior and focusing and making a function-based plan on this individual student, okay? Now, I mentioned earlier Mad Libs. Who here has ever completed a Mad Libs before? Okay, hopefully this one will make more sense, okay? It's really easy, and this is where the school psychs absolutely love this piece of the pie in this plan, is that we just created our own hypothesis statement, okay? All those different pieces that we talked about and that you saw directly inserts into the blanks here. So, you know, student name engages in a blank. So the first blank, it says, identify problem behavior number seven. So going back to question seven, what was the one behavior that we picked? You pick it up and you plug it right in that first line. And then you continue on. It's defined as, how did we as a team operationally define that behavior? This is a concern because what's my rationale and rate? Again, back in that form, questions eight, nine, 10, that's where the Mad Libs comes in. You're picking your answers that your team has and plugging it right into the hypothesis statement. So this is something that we use of not only hypothesis, but to guide our interventions and our data collection as well for progress monitoring. It's easy and then the school psychologist, if the student is still struggling, would possibly need a, a full-blown FBA or a brief FBA. Guess what? Your school psych just gave you a little treat because you already created a hypothesis statement for them, okay? That is backed with data. That is backed with a team approach, okay? So, once we have this hypothesis statement, you're gonna be like, okay, great. Now what? This seems like a lot of work, Chris. Where are you getting? What are you doing, okay? Think, these top tier students they take up a lot, a majority of time, resources, and energy, okay? But they're at the top for a reason. They need these additional supports, okay? So we are putting in the front line of the work to make sure that we address the behaviors so we are not continuing for the long run, okay? Quality of life. This is also, there's my puzzle pieces there, part of the TFI that we look at does the quality of life indicators, is that part of a tier three plan? So why are we thinking quality of life? Anyone want to take a stab at it? Why would we think, why put quality of life in a tier three plan? Don't be shy. To look at the whole child. Okay, so we have to look at the whole child. 
Any other thoughts? Make sure basic needs are being met before we focus on anything else. He said basic needs are being met before we focus on anything else. Great. I just sit down. You guys can continue with this. So far, you're doing great. Anything? Okay. Um, exactly. So we're really looking at all the different components. Again, going back to that tier one, looking at the environment, what changes can we make? Looking at the whole child as a whole. Okay. Um, in our presentation that's included on the Padlet, there is a direct link. Um, this is just one example. Do you have to use it? No. I have, there's five quality of life questionnaires and assessments that are directly linked in here. They run the gamut of some that are just secondary focused. There are some that runs K to 12 and beyond. Um, there's a little mix and match of everything. So it's there for you, okay? Moving on, safety. We spoke about safety earlier. Um, is there a safety concern for themselves or for others that needs a safety plan? So we're looking at that certain behavior. Is there a safety concern? Yes, then I really need to create a team plan for this student that would address this operationally defined, the hypothesis statement that ties it all together, okay? One thing that we include, the safety plan, it's also included with this plan and file for the team as well as anybody that's on the student team as well. Okay. So just two things to consider that's also when you're looking at this um, graphic organizer in a way for this tier three plan, you're gonna see areas and components for quality of life as well as safety too. All right. So here we are, we're getting to our last section of the plan, which is part three, where we want to plan, prevent, and replace the behavior. Um, I like to consider this and think about this in a way that it's kind of like a cheat sheet. Um, of course, all the team members have access to the plan. Um, the teacher, um, gen ed, special ed teachers, depending on where the student's placed and what services they receive, of course, they have action to the plan, they have input, they are already aware this plan exists. However, what comes out of this plan is this cheat sheet right here. And it's a very quick one-page glance that the team decides, okay, what interventions and strategies, thinking about function, thinking about this behavior that we picked, that we are going to utilize and focus in on this student. And we're gonna list them and link them right here on each column. And this is where, for the final part of our presentation, this is where we're going and we're really gonna consider and look at considerations for this document. Okay, so we're looking at before, during, and after the behaviors. So some things to consider. We really, again, we said it a lot, you have to consider the function of the behavior. This layered approach, I'm really shifting my mindset to layers is really considering what tier one and tier two interventions and activities that were in place. So what went well, what didn't? How can we build on that to individualize that for the students? Um, so that's really gonna be key when we get to that PIR, PIR document again. Was there a quality of life or safety concern? Again, looking at the student as a whole um, that needs to be addressed and reflected within this plan. And student choice and student voice whenever appropriate. Um, choice is so powerful. Um, it is such a gift for us to include our students and having them have a say in what their plan looks like. Again, you're creating and thinking about interventions and strategies that we can put into place. What better way than to pull the student in and say, okay, you know, instead of picking up that desk and throwing it at me, you know, what can we do you know, ahead of time, like, would you rather not sit at, would you rather have a table to sit at? And he's like, well, yeah, then I can pick it up and F and throw it at you too, okay? But again, you know. So really bringing in this student voice as well. I, I'm, <laughs> Joe and I, we work together, we're partners in crime, but he always says, we keep it real. I'm just trying so hard not to curse. <laughs> All right. Um, oh yeah, my puzzle pieces, I almost forgot. <laughs> So a little brainstorming activity, if you would indulge me, please. Um, 
that there is a QR code. So I still have about 15 minutes left before um, we head off to lunch. Um, I'm going to keep this up. And it will directly direct you to the Padlet. Oh, this is, I was like. <laughs> I always get excited when I see so many phones come up at me. I was like. Um, it's going to direct you to the Padlet. Um, if you're using a device like a computer, um, the bit.ly here as well. It's Olson, O-L-S-O-N, 23 Forum, F-O-R-U-M. Um, so just when you're in the Padlet, just hang tight for a moment. Uh, I will be giving you um, direct instruction and examples in a moment. Okay. Um, I'm going to move on, but once we get to that part, I can always come back to the QR code that if you didn't get a chance to get it yet. I still see a couple phones out. Okay. So, part of this PIR document, the first section is preventive interventions or strategies. So again, these are things that we want to do prior to the behavior occurring. Think, consider changes we can make to the environment, okay, that would best support this behavior from not occurring. And individuals that would be responsible for setting it up, okay? One thing I always think about is, okay, you know what? I'm going to introduce break cards. And I want to make sure that this student has access to a break. Great. Who's going to take the student on a break? Okay? These are things that your team really needs to think about. You know, if you are going to put break cards, which is a fantastic intervention or strategy, don't get me wrong, just really make sure that you have all the logistics ironed out, okay? Um, individuals that would be responsible for either setting it up or implementing it. So this idea of break cards, who, if they're going to leave the classroom for a break, which is a possibility, who's going to facilitate that break in the halls, take them for a cool down walk, whatever, um, versus having a break in the classroom. Okay. Um, and again, have the start. We just want to ensure again that these intervention strategies match the function. Okay. Um, in our Padlet, you will see, so the first section is the handouts. That's where everything that we talked about, plans, surveys, questionnaires, the slides, they're all in that first section. Um, however, first, we are going to be looking at this second column, preventive strategies or interventions. And if you would, when I say go, um, there is a little addition sign, a little plus cross there that you would click on. And what I would like for us to think about is this is going to be kind of like a brainstorm dump, if you would, where what are some interventions or strategies you can think of to do prior to behavior occurring? You can think about a current student. You can think about students in the past. Um, you can think about just research in general, uh, just like Dr. McDanielson said this morning about really honing in on that research side of things, that bridging the gap research to practice. Um, and what I'm hoping if I do this correctly too, is so thinking, so I click the little plus sign, um, this think about this, this I do, we do, you do approach that we're talking about that, um, I'm going to do it first, we're going to do it together, and then you can take this back to your teams and do it alone. Um, I'm really thinking about layering in tier one supports. So I'm, my student really is keen on our, you know, our school bucks. So I want to schedule um, school bucks more frequently. Okay where I'm actually you know, setting a timer for the teacher would be like, okay, every five minutes I need to catch this student doing something. Because again, tier one, that's what we want. And you just publish it. So right now, we're gonna take a, just a couple minutes. Um, please, n there's no wrong answers, okay? And you can think function itself, you don't have to. Um, 
when you get back to your teams, you're still going to have access to this Padlet. And when you have a student in mind and you're struggling, what I'm hoping for is that you visit this Padlet again and be like, you know what? Here's my function that I'm thinking about. What strategies and interventions can I do that might fit this function in this student? Okay, so let's take a couple minutes. Go ahead, you can even talk to a, a neighbor next door to brainstorm together. I'm hoping that it works. And you can add to this. I think I have the settings done correctly. <coughs> And right now, we are just focusing on the preventive. It just works. OK, great. I was like, why is my phone buzzing so much? I get email notifications every single time somebody adds something. So I'm like, what's going on? Here I am talking about you know, being engaged and being um, respectful this morning about phone on vibrates. I was like, oh my gosh, did something happen? No, it's you guys. Great, I just have to, yeah. So removing distractions, that's great. Pre-correct, social stories, wonderful. Pre-teaching, yes. Um, this is more of a behavioral lens today, um, but again, you can still apply this and you can create a tier three plan for academics as well using the same kind of system because I saw some like pre-correct and some things too. Movement breaks first, then um, preferential seating, zones of regulation, yes. Calm down corners, preventative SELs, bringing some SELs, yes. Seeing a lot of smiling faces, so I'm thinking we're kind of, and again, if you get one, two, great. Or if you're in another session later on and you're thinking about me, be like, hop back in this Padlet and add some more. Um, that's great too. Okay. Um, just for the time, so we have about 10 minutes left, um, which is great, because when I practiced this again last night, I finished everything in 30 minutes, because I was like, bah, 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 so I was really worried. Um, we are going to jump in to the next section as well, but I do have to go back. All right. Instructive interventions. So these are things to do while a behavior is occurring. Okay. So it really, again, should be paired with function. So this time, I think you know where we're going. Right next door in this middle column here, instructive strategies or interventions, we're gonna do the same exact thing by clicking the plus sign, adding in your ideas and um, strategies as well. So I've seen some great ideas. Proximity, um, nonverbal redirection, that's great. Use of the weight strategy, capital W-A-I-T, I should say, strategy. Um, redirecting, withholding attention, so maybe some planned ignoring when appropriate. Monitoring breath, um, breathing techniques. Um, just even reminders, I don't think it's up here yet. Don't want to steal anyone's thunder if you're typing this. I, I'm, I'll, be quiet on, I'll be quiet on my ideas, yeah. Uh, I laugh because I bribe them. Okay, we'll talk about that. I told you, there's no wrong answers, people. I know it was you, 100%. Uh, they told me they wouldn't pick on me during this. They said, oh, you'll be fine. Don't be nervous. We'll be, we'll, we're not going to pick on you. We're not going to do anything. And then they put bribing in. Yeah, no. Bribing to an extent. You might, and again, these are even things we laugh and joke about it. You're still going to hear that. You're going to hear that in your teams. You're going to be like, you know, 
oh, PBS, that's just bribing. You know, what's Joe's thing? He's like, oh, it's, what do you do? Just give him a cookie? I stole that story. Planned ignoring, staying calm, reteaching. Um, these are great ideas. Okay. Thank you. Small groups, one on one instruction, mindfulness. Yes, I'm a huge mindfulness guy, um, both professionally and personally. So great. Okay. And I bet before I even go to where I'm going next, responsive. Things to do after a behavior occurs. Okay. Just a caveat. This is not to be confused with consequences. Okay. So we're not thinking, okay, you know, if the student elopes, well, then that's um, in school suspension. That's out of school. That's expulsion. No. We're not thinking timeouts. We're not thinking loss of privileges. Okay. What can we do as a strategy or reteaching intervention after a behavior occurs? So we're in that final column of responsiveness and same procedures as always. Okay. So go ahead. Let's get some thoughts down um, before we wrap up and have some time for questions and get you guys off to lunch. So I'm seeing some restorative practices, some restorative conversations, reflection, debriefing, um, documentation, problem solving. Joe, put your phone down. <laughs> Kirsten, you too. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, so behavioral contracts, those are great. Restating expectations. Um, so again, sandwiching the positive with the repetitive of expectations, repairing the harm. Um, Reviewing behavioral expectations, so going right back to the matrices, absolutely. Okay, reteaching, repeating. Great, behavioral logs, yes, thank you. Okay, so thank you. What does this all lead up to? Okay, you're like, well, Chris, that's great, you, you just had us do all the work for you. Here I'm getting paid the big bucks to stand up here and talk to you. No, I'm not getting paid, I promise. <laughs> um, what does it lead to? So remember that PIR document that we looked at about six slides ago? It was empty, it had three columns. Here it is filled in. Here's my cheat sheet that I created for a quick glance at the student. Okay, student in mind, what can I do preventively to ensure and, and help that this behavior is not occurring? Well, I'm going back to my tier one. So at Valley View, our incentive, our token economy, we had cougar cash. That's our school bucks, school cash. We were the cougars, so that's what we called it. Um, I'm going to increase tier one initiative of supplying cougar cash. How am I going to do that? I'm going to challenge myself as a teacher to a minimum of five cougar cash per school day, paired with positive specific praise. And it's going to be, because again, this the economy was very motivating for the student. So I'm going to use that in my best interest. Okay? And schedule breaks. So we're going to have a student, you know, using a folder to another teacher in the building, current needs, again, making sure that I had the appropriate people to do this prior. What are some things that I can do during the behavior? So again, we're only picking two or three off of the list. Okay? We don't want to throw all our ideas all at once because what happens if none of that works? Or there's too much, you know, to hear that too many chefs in the kitchen? There's too many things in your bag of tricks right now. So we're only gonna dabble and try a couple at a time. Collect data, progress monitor, see how we're doing. If we need to add another component, great. If we need to scale back a little bit, fantastic. Okay, so again, these are just some examples, some elopement things. I'm, you know, we're directly teaching, you know, the student is eloping. Okay, well, I'm not going to fight the battle of stopping them eloping. However, I'm going to teach them if they're eloping, this is where you elope to. Okay, it's not a free run. This is my very first step of trying to stop the behavior. Okay, so I'm teaching the student, okay, if I need to escape, if I need to elope, I am running to this room, this space, this spot. Okay, deep breathing. 
And then afterwards, how am I responding to the behavior? Well, possibly plan ignoring, corrected feedback. Um, again, come back to the Padlet. I'm going to reread these this week. I'm going to add some more components in as well. So my hope is that you and your team take a look at these strategies. If you, and again, it's kind of like a backup. If you can think of strategies that would work for the student yourselves as a team, come back and take a look. Picking based off of function, OK? Not all strategies would work for all functions, OK? So just keep that in the back of our minds. So I'll, I know we have only a couple minutes, but I'll stick around if um, during lunch a little bit if people have any additional questions. Uh, but that's me in a nutshell. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.